this online presentation and for considering uh, volunteering with the American Red Cross. Cross. Uh, as you see, we are going to be recording this session. Uh, feel free to take notes throughout the day. We will be sharing the presentation deck after the meeting, so don't get too involved in taking any notes, and we'll also share the recording as well. You can also ask any questions uh, subsequently. So uh, again, resolve the volunteer. This is the kickoff of the new year. We are asking people to you know, help us save lives with the American Red Cross. And the purpose of our meeting today is to talk a little bit about the Red Cross, where we're from, the things that we do, we do. about our mission. Um, we're also hoping, to, can everybody hear me, of course? Yes. Yes. Thank you. We're yes. also going to introduce what we think are two very exciting volunteer opportunities to help at our blood drives, specifically being a blood donor ambassador or a blood transport volunteer. And these are two positions that are available to the general public. And we do appreciate you considering these volunteer roles for yourself. You're also going to hear from some volunteers who are currently doing these roles. We hope to answer any questions and help you get started on your remarkable journey as a Red Cross volunteer. <laughs> Before we get into the meat of it, however, I'd like to just introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is Ned Bloom. I am be one of your hosts today. I started as a volunteer myself about 12 years ago with the Red Cross and considered one of the best decisions I've ever made. I've made some great friends and really learned a lot along the way. I've been thrilled with the relationships uh, I've built and uh, everything that we do. My, my, uh, my co-host with me, and I'm going to ask her to introduce herself, is Lynn Cohen. Uh, Lynn, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that'd be wonderful. Hi, everybody. My name is Lynn Cohen, and I've been with the Red Cross for three years now. I absolutely love working with the Red Cross. I started out as an engagement specialist, and now I'm a recruitment specialist. I've been in volunteer leadership and management for pretty much most of my career. I absolutely love working with volunteers. Um, you guys bring so much to the table with your talent, experience, and um, here at the Red Cross, we really do appreciate that. So thank you, thank you so much for uh, supporting our mission and, and attending today and perhaps coming back to continue your support of our mission. We appreciate it. Thank you, Ned. Indeed, thank you, Lane. We're also going to meet later during our presentation three of my favorite people, Deirdre Butler, who is from our Biomed Services Department. Uh, we're also going to meet with two of our great volunteers, uh, Marianne and Dave. And we're going to have an opportunity to hear from both of them as well very shortly. Uh, a couple of housekeeping rules, a couple of like ground rules kind of help us get through this presentation. If you can, please mute yourself. It's a little distracting if we hear your cats and dogs and children in the background. Um, we do ask that you be present for the next 30 minutes. Really kind of pay attention. We can hopefully share some important information, and we really want to make sure that you gather everything that we do have to share today. And if you have any questions, feel put them in the chat box, or we can hold them to the end because we will hopefully address some of those questions as we go along, but we'll also have an open forum towards the end of the presentation. Uh, if you're not familiar with how Teams works, it has a lot of wonderful features. Uh, if you're familiar with there's actually a, a on your screen, there's probably a three dots that say more actions. So uh, you can put some things in there. Uh, you can also uh, click on your hand raise or clap if you like. So if you want to do a hands applaud or a thumbs up, just to let me know you're receiving this information. That'd be terrific. Uh, we always appreciate that feedback as well. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. And we're going to hopefully uh, answer all your questions and excite you and motivate you to become a Red Cross volunteer. We always like to start off, of course, by talking about the mission, because that really is what drives us. What is the mission of the Red Cross? The mission of the Red Cross is very simple. We prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies by mobilizing the power of volunteers and the generosity of donors. And it's the power of volunteers that's really the most important part of this. 90% of our workforce is volunteers, and we'll talk about that and the generosity of donors. I promise you guys, we are not here today to ask you for money, not at all. We are here to ask you for your time, maybe something that's even more valuable. So you know, just a little bit of tidbit, the American Red Cross is the largest international organization that gets zero money from the government. We, we're the country's largest humanitarian organization. We get zero money from the government. So um, let me go back, who, uh, who advanced my screen there? Oh, somebody advanced my screen. Who took I, I control take, of my screen? I take huh? the lane. I don't know what I did, but it 
I did it. It's Marianne. Do you oh, have okay. it back? Yeah, if I can get that back, that'd be uh, great. I will stop touching anything. Sorry. <laughs> I'm Not so a sorry. problem. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see how I can get the screen back. All right, hold on. I'll be right. Let me see if I can reshare my screen here. Again, this this reminds us as as Gumby sits on my desk that we all do have to be flexible. So, all right. There's the mission. There we are. Back to the fundamental principles. Are you seeing on your screen right now the fundamental principles? picture. Awesome. Much appreciated. Thank you very much for that. So these are actually the guidelines. These are the things that guide us as American Red Crossers. Humanitarian, excuse me, humanity, impartiality, neutrality, independence. And the most important one I think is volunteer service. Again, 90% of the American Red Cross is made up of volunteers. I'm a rare sighting. Lynn is a rare sighting. So 90% of everything the Red Cross does is done and led by volunteers. There's also only one Red Cross in every country, and every country across the globe does have a Red Cross. I also want to point out that, of course, we're under the pandemic protocols currently. And I do want to put this out that safety is paramount for all of our volunteers. And as a result, because of this, we're requiring all volunteers to be fully vaccinated for in-person roles. Just make that very, very clear. All in-person roles do require full vaccination, and this protocol goes into effect in a couple of weeks. So I want to make sure everybody's clear on that. So what does the Red Cross do? Well, we do so many things and a lot of things you may know about. We have an expression that we're more than blood and flood. OK, obviously we do respond to disasters. That's where I started as a volunteer myself 12 years ago. We respond to national and as well as local disasters. And if that's something that interests you, we can talk about that. Our biomed needs, and that's really what we're going to concentrate on today. We're responsible for about half of the country's blood supply, and this does not happen without volunteers. Some other lines of service that you may not know about include service to the armed forces, training services, and international services. The reason we list these today is because we want to remind you, no matter what you want to do with the Red Cross, no matter what your interest, no matter what your availability, no matter your schedule, we can hopefully find something that fits for you. But today we really want to talk about our need and biomedical needs and our need for blood, because that really is right now the most current and most urgent need. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Deirdre Butler, and Deirdre is going to uh, fill you in a little further. Deirdre, the floor is yours. Hey, thanks, Ned. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Ned mentioned, my name is Deirdre Butler. Um, I'm the, vol the Biomedical Volunteer Engagement Supervisor for the Penn Jersey region. So I supervise um, all of our volunteer managers in all of Pennsylvania and New Jersey, uh, inclusive of the the five southeastern Pennsylvania counties. Um, and I'm happy to share with you the importance of blood drives and the impact of our volunteers um, on the collection of blood and blood components uh, at each drive. I apologize, my dog is uh, letting me know that there's someone out front. <laughs> so hopefully that's not too much of a distraction. Um, did you know that every two seconds someone in the United States needs blood? Um, it's essential for surgeries, cancer treatment, chronic illnesses, and so much more. And whether a patient receives whole blood, red cells, platelets, or plasma, this life-saving care starts with one person, person making a generous donation. Approximately 36,000 units of red blood cells are needed every day in the U.S., and the Red Cross provides about 40% of our nation's blood and blood components. Uh, as you might have heard, the American Red Cross is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, as you might have heard, the, um, the United States is facing a national blood crisis. Uh, it's worst blood shortage in over a decade, which is posing a concerning risk to patient care. Uh, the Red Cross has experienced about 10% decline in the number of people donating blood since the pandemic began. Um, and in order to meet the demand for blood products, the Red Cross collects every uh, blood every day via our fixed sites, in our mobile drives. Uh, our fixed sites are located um, in, that are, are locations that are open seven days a week uh, for blood donations. And there are four fixed sites in the Southeastern Pennsylvania region. Um, we sometimes call them donor centers as well. Um, and they're currently operating, um, and there's two in Philadelphia, one kind of closer to Center City, one in Northeastern Philadelphia, uh, one in West, West Chester, so Chester County, 
and one in Horsham uh, in Montgomery County. Um, and then the Red Cross uh, also coordinates what we call mobile drives throughout the week, uh, typically Monday through Friday during normal business hours. Um, and these are blood drives that happen out in the community, like at schools or churches, workplaces, hospitals, um, you know, lots of different types of locations uh, throughout the community. Um, while these drives have been scaled back a bit during COVID-19, they um, are still happening every day throughout the region. And this is why we very much need blood services volunteers throughout the southeastern Pennsylvania region. Uh, statistics show that every blood drive that's staffed with a volunteer collects three more units of blood than one without a volunteer. And that's because volunteers, you're able to take some of the load off of our collection staff members, which uh, that are, those include phlebotomists and registered nurses, um, and allows them to focus on the, you know, the blood collection. And then our volunteers are literally helping save, uh, uh, helping us collect more life-saving blood and blood components. Uh, we also know that having a volunteer at a blood drive provides a more pleasant experience for our donors, um, which then leads to them returning to donate again in the future, which is definitely necessary um, to keeping up with the, the blood supply. Uh, so now that you know why blood service volunteers are so important, we'll share about the types of volunteer roles in biomedical services that we're currently recruiting for. Uh, these positions include blood donor ambassadors who assist donors with checking in, ushering them through the, dona uh, the donation process, and, um, and also our transportation specialists who literally transport the blood components to their destination. Uh, so I'm going to pass the mic over to Lynn Cohen, who will share a bit more about the expectations of each position. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Can you advance the slide, please? So thank you so much, um, Deidre. That was some excellent information. I didn't realize it was every two seconds, but I learned something new every day. So um, with regard to the blood donor ambassador role, you know, I'm not going to read this to you, but the most important thing to know about the role is it's very, very flexible for your schedule and for where you live. So the expectation is only one to two shifts per month and you get to pick those shifts in those locations. So it's an awesome opportunity for you to get engaged to uh, with something that's very close to you. Um, it might be a church, it might be a Rotary Club hosting, it might be a local business that you know that you see as a blood drive in your area and you know you can sign up for that and attend. So uh, we appreciate that and, and it's same pretty much for the blood transportation specialists. So these roles are pretty flexible. They need you to volunteer one to two shifts per month. Um, they ask you to go out, you know, your route may be locally. I mean, there's over 200 hospitals in our regional footprint. So you may start, you know, from Philadelphia and head out to Chester, to Chester County Hospital, for example. Sometimes they have routes for you to go to New Jersey or to Lancaster if you feel like driving a lot that day. So, um, and you get trained on all these opportunities. So without further ado, we actually have a most fabulous blood donor ambassador here with us today. And she does more than just blood donor ambassador. It's Marianne Santangelo, and she is going to share her Red Cross journey with us so far. So with that, I'm turning it over to you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. I'm not that fabulous, but thank you. I'll take it. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining uh, this call, and thank you to the Red Cross for inviting me to share uh, a little bit about the BDA job. So um, I don't have a story to tell where the Red Cross came to my uh, family or my own rescue. Um, as much as I always thought about volunteering, I was in a very uh, fast-paced career in advertising, and I also taught classes at Temple University three mornings a week. So there wasn't even, there was no gap in my busy schedule. But soon as I retired, I got right into it. And I don't want you to think that uh, volunteering is just for older people. Uh, over the past two years since I've been uh, volunteering, I have met many young people who are uh, just terrific and active volunteers and very happy to be helping. Um, so why did I choose the Red Cross when it was time for me to enter a new 
career as a volunteer for two main reasons. One, Ted already went over it, the mission. I mean, I just love the Red Cross mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering. I mean, that, that is just to me all inspiring and the most humanitarian reason for being. And number two, as has already been stated, most of that mission is um, carried out by volunteers. 90% of the work done by the Red Cross is done by volunteers. And I really like the idea of working for an organization where volunteers are so essential to fulfilling such an astounding mission. So after I completed my application and had my phone interview, it was clear that the best way for me to get started with the Red Cross was as a BDA, just based on my interests and how the Red Cross needed my help. I have since expanded in my role when I do various programs for the Red Cross, but I will focus on, on my BDA work, which I continue to do today. Um, I gotta tell you, I really like working at a blood drive because it's a collaborative effort. It's a collaboration between a volunteer, the collection staff, and a donor. You're really, you're a member of a team that's working together for about five hours to save lives. And that's to me really uh, significant and uh, a great way to spend a day. Um, so what does a BDA do? Well, Deidre already touched on it and the previous slide showed that we manage the registration desk. But what does that really mean? Well, we make sure the donor has made a reservation when they arrive, that they're on the schedule. We ensure that they've completed the self-check reading which determines whether they actually are able to give blood that day. We register them in a computer system and we manage their expectations. If there is going to be a longer than usual wait, we explain the situation to the donor. If they didn't make a reservation and the blood drive is booked, we explain to them why we can accommodate them and encourage them to make a reservation at another blood drive. In other words, we're in charge of the upfront process so that the staff can focus on what they need to do to collect the much needed blood. The previous slide also noted that we manage the hospitality area and that entails not only putting out water and juice and snacks for the donors, but monitoring them after they've given blood to be sure they're not having a negative reaction. And in the rare instances where that happens, the BDA is right there to help. So that's most of what we do. It's an important job, but why do we do it? Two reasons. One, to make sure, as Deidre said, that the donor has a good experience. We are the first person a donor interacts with when they get to a blood drive. We greet them with a smile. We welcome them in a warm and friendly way, and we're the last per person the donor interacts with before they leave the blood drive. We thank them often and wholeheartedly. We set the tone for a good experience, and this is so important because we want that donor to come back and give blood as often as they can for as long as they are able, because blood, as has already been stated, is in short supply. And, uh, you know, right now, U.S. blood banks are experience their, experiencing their biggest shortage in a decade. It can't create it in a test tube. So we need that, that donor who's also volunteering their own blood to feel really good after they leave a blood drive and to actually look forward to doing it again. And number two, again, Deidre's already stated this, to enable the blood drive to run efficiently because a blood drive without a, a volunteer, as you can imagine, is very, very difficult for the staff to, uh, to manage. They really need to focus on collecting the blood and they rely on volunteers for the pre and post activities. So just to summarize, being a BDA offers volunteers, one, the ability to help the Red Cross deliver its mission. Number two, the opportunity to play a really important role at a life-saving event. And three, the flexibility as um, 
um, Lynn mentioned, the flexibility of working when and where you are able. And I will also add that it's fun. I've met a lot of great people, made some new friends. And while I didn't expect a volunteer job to be as exciting as my very exciting career, it really is. And I, uh, I feel like when you can give back while enjoying, getting enjoyment from the effort, that just describes a great volunteer experience. So thank you for this opportunity to share my volunteer musings with you. And at the end, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to attempt to answer them. I am now turning it back to Lynn. Fabulous, Marianne. Thank you so much. Great information and so glad that you're finding joy in giving back and while you're saving lives. So next slide, please. So um, I'm not going to talk about this too much because we have a fabulous volunteer, Dave Brown, who's been with the Red Cross driving uh, blood supplies to hospitals for over eight years. And like I said, this is a, another flexible, great opportunity. Um, there are some requirements there that you have a valid driver's license, proof of insurance, ability to lift 45 pounds and three years plus clean driving record. But if you have all that, you can use your vehicle or a Red Cross vehicle. So um, it's a great opportunity to help save lives and walk into that hospital and, and give blood um, when they're waiting for it for maybe the next surgery. So it's a great opportunity. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce the fabulous Dave Brown. Hello, everyone. Um... As Lynn said, I've been volunteering for the Red Cross for eight years, and I'll just give you a little bit of a history of my eight years. Uh, when I, and these, I'm dividing it into three different options for blood transportation. These are my terms, not Red Cross terms. Uh, the first one I call contactless. Everybody, since the pandemic, is going to Longhorn or Outback and the contactless where you call ahead, you don't touch anything, they put it in your car. Uh, when you have site pickups, basically it's your vehicle, you go to the site, you pop the trunk, you tell them you've arrived, and they put it in your trunk. You do not touch anything. You drive to the muster center at 7th and Spring Garden in Philadelphia, and you pop your trunk, uh, hit the buzzer, and they come out and get it. So absolutely, uh, you're not having any contact with anyone. And that's how I started the few years, the first few years. And then uh, we had a discussion yesterday when we were practicing for this. I'm not sure anybody else does it, but my second, um, what I would call option is hybrid. I was doing what I described, going to a blood drive, picking up the blood, taking it down to Philadelphia, and then I'd go home. And it didn't seem to make sense to go home empty when there were hospitals that needed blood. So somehow I morphed into picking up blood, taking it to Philly. And then since I live in Collegeville near Valley Forge, I'd say, are there any hospitals in Southeastern Pennsylvania that I'd be driving by on the way home and driving and I would do a double. Then everybody remembers the day that uh, in March, uh, two years ago now when the pandemic happened and I don't do well sitting home alone. I basically was volunteering at six different organizations and would do a different one every day. And that week, the other five shut down. The Red Cross does not shut down. It's seven by 24 by 365. And that day I switched to solid hospital transport. So what I do is I drive my car to the hospital or to the uh, muster center and then go to uh, Someone mentioned there's about 200 hospitals. My goal is to hit at least 100. I've delivered blood to 92 different hospitals and counting. And uh, I choose to use my car. You could use your truck. So um, that's pretty much it. A uh, couple things I want to emphasize about the flexibility is obviously you saw I, I chose where I went and when. It's totally, you're a volunteer. If you shouldn't go anywhere you're not comfortable with. You shouldn't drive in weather you're not comfortable with. I have called it because of tornadoes, hurricanes, blizzards. I have uh, been one time I was told to go to Yonkers and that was so early on I turned it down. Another example was 
uh, when I was doing the hospital deliveries, I had eye surgery, three different eye surgeries in a year. And for that year, I said, I only want to deliver in Southeastern Pennsylvania, not to other states, not to um, Center City, Philly, just because of my impaired vision. So basically, I love doing it. You feel good after it's done. And there is ultimate flexibility. When I signed up to do it, I had a good friend that was doing it before I was, and I had many conversations with her to see exactly how it worked and just a number of questions. What I'm going to do is put my contact information in the chat box now. If anybody is interested in being a volunteer driver uh, and has some questions that come up after this meeting, feel free to reach out and contact. So thanks for your time. And I think I turn it back to Lynn now and I will uh, put the information, my contact information in the chat box. Thank you, Dave, so much. We really, really appreciate um, all that you do for the Red Cross and, and for delivering really that gift of life. So um, it's so important. And those people's lives wouldn't be saved without volunteers. That's the bottom line. So. Um, thank you again for that. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ned. Or no, I do. I am going to do this. So um, we do have some additional unique roles. So these are not open exactly for external recruitment yet, but they are um, probably coming very soon. So one is a volunteer medical screener, and this is someone who's going to be performing regulated medical screening of potential donors, including obtaining their health history, their temperature and blood pressure. So after you uh, read all the paperwork and you go sit down, this is what the medical screener is. The person, if you've ever donated blood, this is the person who asks you questions, uh, pricks your finger, makes sure your hemoglobin's up to par before you can donate, and that's always to protect you um, so and make sure that you're healthy enough to donate and so there is a training that that goes uh, I believe I understand it's three week a three week training um, and there is a longer time commitment for that and if anyone's interested we will put you directly in touch with the person who is responsible for this um, also volunteer post collection with completer role. So this is a new position that's helping with setting up and breaking down the activities and performing, um, discontinuing the blood uh, unit. So basically you would be pulling a needle out of someone's arm and you would be examining collection packages, packing the units and transporting the batches, et cetera. So both positions require one month training and two months of field work. So again, if you're interested in that, please reach out to Ned or myself and our information is on the slide deck. We can also put it in the chat. So with that, I'm turning it back over to Ned. Thank you, Lynn, and thank you, Deirdre, and especially thank you to Dave and Marianne, two of our amazing volunteers. I'm going to give you guys a virtual applause here. If I can ask everybody else to do so as well, that'd be wonderful. Um, we did talk about two. There you go. Awesome. Nicely done. Thank you very much. So we talked about two very important roles, volunteer roles at our blood drives. The blood donor ambassador role, which is that meet and greet role, which is hospitality oriented and really makes for a more positive experience for being involved. If you like to talk to people, if you like to greet people, if you've got a welcoming smile, it's something I we ask you to consider. The other role, of course, is our blood transport role. We actually are delivering the blood from blood drives or to the, or to Center City hospitals or to the hospitals in the area. I apologize. So if you do see a Red Cross vehicle out on the road, wave. That's probably a volunteer behind the wheel there because, again, 90% of our workforce is volunteers. Um, I had a volunteer driver tell me a story that he got off an elevator at a local hospital and there at the end of the hallway, he said there were doctors and nurses waiting to perform surgery with the blood that he was delivering. And he went down the hallway like a, with a cape behind him. He felt like a superhero. So if you like the open road, if you like to drive, we ask you to consider that role as well. So the question is, how do you become a volunteer with the Red Cross? I know you're all asking. Well, it's really easy. It's an online application. 
and the email address is there. We'll make sure that we send it out to you as well after this session so you have that link. And when you're on that volunteer application, we're going to learn a little bit about you. You're going to learn a little bit about us as well, including some of the other opportunities that are out there for you. Okay, because we want to make sure that whatever you do with the Red Cross matches your interests and your skills and your schedule and what you want to do. And you can change your path along the way at any time. So while you're filling out your application, you're going to learn about the things that you can do with us, including these two very important roles, the ambassador role and the driver role. We're going to conduct a standard background check. It's all free. And that's a standard procedure for all volunteers for our own safety. And then you're going to have what's called a volunteer interview over the telephone with another volunteer. Again, that's a volunteer role. And during that conversation, arranged at your schedule, arranged at your convenience, you're going to ask all of your questions, confirm your expectations of your role, and make sure you really know what's about to start out. From there, we can introduce you to your team, to a volunteer manager and some other teammates who are already engaged in your activity, and they'll help with scheduling and onboarding and really become great new friends along the way. As I said, I started myself about 12 years ago, and I've made some great, great friends on my, both of my disaster action teams that I'm a member of, as well as a blood donor. I should tell you also something interesting as our blood donors now that we get to find out where the blood goes in many cases. I gave blood a few weeks ago and I found that my blood went to Buffalo, New York. I've never been to Buffalo, New York. Part of me is now in Buffalo, New York, so I was pretty excited by that. So once you've met your volunteer manager and met your team, you'll be trained and then you schedule blood drives on your schedule on your convenience. You'll see the schedule about two months out and say, oh, there's a blood drive at the Thomas School on the 18th. I can do that one. And you sign up for that one online. And then when you get there, everything is waiting for you. And all you have to do is be there and be a presence and be an ambassador, or you pick up your driving route and you meet your drivers and you go and you deliver the blood where it needs to go. And now in case we keep you active, we keep you engaged throughout the entire time you're with the Red Cross. We have newsletters, we have recognition events, we have a lot of fun as well. So we make sure that we continue to keep you active and keep you involved. Because when you go home at the end of the day, your family asks you what you did you did that day. Don't tell them you were a blood their ambassador. Tell them that you helped deliver, you helped save lives and you really are a superhero. And that's really how cool it is to be a Red Cross volunteer. So this is the process and how you become a volunteer. We'll send out the information again after this mess, after this presentation, so you can have it. And you'll also have our contact information. Speaking of our contact information, there is mine and there is Lynn's. So you can reach us by telephone, by text, by email. Throw a rock through our window. Don't, don't throw a rock through our window, please. But please reach out to us and we'll make sure that we have you have our contact information as well. So now the floor is yours. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any thoughts? I mean, have you thought, what do you want to do with the Red Cross? Do you want to be an ambassador? Do you want to be a driver? What questions or comments do you have at this time? I'll turn it over to you. If you like a quick to come offline or ask a question, or if you want to put in the chat box, we're always available to help. Thank you very much for the nice presentation. Um, I think that I'd be interested in the uh, blood donor ambassador. Um, the only question I have is like, can you p like say like I want to stay in say Northeast Philadelphia or all of Philadelphia and just stay in that area? Absolutely, that's exactly that's a great question. Can you stay in your own neighborhood? Can you stay in your own community? Of course you can. So what's going to happen is once you're trained, we will send you the schedule out occasionally, and you'll have advanced knowledge of the schedule. And you'll see where and when blood drives are scheduled. And you'll see that there's one in my neighborhood. Oh, it's right down the road. It's next week or next month. I can do that one. So you only sign up for blood drives that are in your schedule, that are in your neighborhood, that you can get to. And we'll work with you and always be flexible as well. Great question. Until Thank you very much. You mentioned Northeast Philadelphia. Uh, we definitely can use some volunteers in Northeast Philly. That is one area where we um, have a, a high need for um, for donor ambassadors up that way. And we have a question in the chat from Susan Walsh, and it is, do we get any training? So I don't know if Deidre wants to take that or Marianne. Marianne, um, since you kind of onboard people and train them, how about you take that? Thank you. If you are uh, interested in being a BDA, um, I do. You'll, you'll you'll get some stuff to read, a video, and some information from an onboarding person. We work as partners, and then 
she directs you to me. And I set up, it usually takes about an hour, depending on questions, uh, about an hour of a virtual presentation. And I'm generally present uh, a training, uh, not a presentation, training session. I'm generally training a couple of people at a time, depends, depends on how active that week is with volunteers. And I bring up a slide deck. We talk about exactly what you do from the minute you get to, the, the, from the minute the blood donor enters, we go through what the computer asks you to do and you follow along and you ask questions. And then I show you how to schedule yourself on the um, volunteer connection, which is our um, site where we can pull up the blood drives in our county and see which ones are still waiting for volunteers. And I take you through all that, and you're good to go at the end of that hour. And Marianne won't say it, but she is a trainer extraordinaire. So you, if you, and she trains just for the blood donor ambassador position. But if you do, uh, you know, go through her training as a blood donor ambassador, you will be fully prepared for uh, for your role as a Thank as a donor ambassador. She's she's Thank excellent. You. Um, and then for the transportation specialist position, and I'm um, sure, Dave, if you if you want to share any, any about that, but you will have, um, uh, there is an onboarding and training lead who does um, an in-person uh, uh, training for that position as well. And we'll show you, you know, where to, you know, where to go, where to pick up your vehicle, how to, um, you know, we'll give you all, all the details about that. So that, that is a, um, uh, an in-person training. Yeah, Mike would take care of the in-person training, and then you would probably go on a test drive with me. Uh, the first time to the hospital, we're just not going to send you to a hospital. I ride along with you. So if you have any questions or problems, I'm there. So I think the bottom line is there's plenty of training available. There's a team behind you. There's a team in front of you. You are always part of this collective that we call the One Red Cross family. And we certainly look forward to welcoming everybody to the team. I saw some great comments in the chat box. I saw a couple of people who said they're interested in being a blood donor ambassador, which is outstanding. I saw some people said they want to be a driver, which is also fantastic. And again, these roles help save lives. And it's really a good feeling. Um, I, I can't tell you how warm and happy I feel every time I have an opportunity to do something on behalf of the Red Cross when I started as a volunteer. And now I get to work with this team every day. Um, so we look forward to staying in touch. Um, does anybody have any other questions or comments at this time? I do, Ned. Yes, I have a Please. Um, hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, the presentation was really great. Um, Ned, I like your sense of humor. Um, <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I just want to say I'd be interested in the, um, the blood donor um, um, what did you call it? BDA? Ambassador. Yes. And mm -hmm. but I I'm in a wheelchair full time. So how would that work for someone who uses a wheelchair? Would I uh, I don't know if I would have the abilities that you're looking for or not? Kelly, it's it's, it's a phenomenal question. We much appreciate that. In fact, a number of our volunteers are in wheelchairs or have you know access availability issues. So all of our blood jars are arranged where handicap accessibility is on top of the, is, is paramount. So of course, all of our facilities, all of our Red Cross facilities, all the conditions, all the places where we actually conduct our blood drives do have full handicap accessibility. So that should not be an issue. We do appreciate the question though. Very, very good point. Marianne, I thought you, I saw you're nodding your head up as well. Can you add something in there? Well, just, just to say that we work at a registration desk and, um, and there's always a chair behind it. So you're sitting like at the front desk. You really never need to stand. I do be simply because I'm antsy, but um, it's, it's a perfect job for someone in a wheelchair because what you're doing is all, all tabletop. Your computer is right there, you know, right in front of you. Um, uh, you can wheel if you can, you know, over to put out refreshments. Everything again is very accessible. Nothing's on a high shelf. Off, nothing can easily get to it. Okay. Well, my other question as, is, as I, as I'm as sorry. As your smile and your gratitude toward the donor is uh, a, a, is there. That's all you really need. Great okay. Get another Wait. question, please. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I I also need a caregiver to be with me. So would that be allowed? That was one of my questions as well. 
do you Absolutely. Through a We'd love to get your caregiver on board as a volunteer as well. That'd be terrific. That way you guys can work as a team. And that's okay. the case. Of, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you guys who are working as a team. It also brings up the point that Blood Ambassadors can be a team. If you like to drive and want to have a navigator, your husband or wife or, you know, just a friend or your child who's at least, you know, 16 or 18 years old, and you want a navigator, you can also do that. Again, we'll work with you. Our role is to work for the volunteers. I tell all the volunteers all the time, I work for you. You have to share me, but I'm happy to work for you guys. So, yes, we'd be happy to work with you and uh, make you a team, and that'd be wonderful to have you on board. You know, it's Great. interesting. Um, I've worked with a lot of organizations, and I think we've all heard a lot of organizations talk the talk about diversity and inclusion. And this organization, more than any other one that I've ever been affiliated with, not just talks the talk, but walks the walk. We absolutely are dedicated and committed because we need to represent the communities that we serve. So therefore our entire, our family has to be all inclusive in all representation. So thank you for those questions. We certainly look forward to welcoming you to the team. You're gonna have a lot of fun. You're gonna meet some people and uh, you'll find that you're gonna look forward to those days where you're volunteering because you really, it just feels such, just so overwhelmingly happy some days. So um, I'm gonna, I could prattle on forever and try and shut me up about the Red Cross, please. Don't try and shut me up about the Red Cross. But if there's anything else I can answer, I'm happy to. Is any more questions at this time? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Please. Um, number one, yeah, number one is safety precautions. Yes. Is everybody wear a mask? Um, you say volunteers have to be vaccinated. Do blood donors have to be vaccinated? And do blood no. donors as well as the staff wear a mask? In fact, we actually have Red Cross masks for you. So yes, so the Red Cross volunteers and the Red Cross staff, those are the ones that we have to ask to be vaccinated. Those are the ones that we are in, we, we can talk to and communicate. It is not by law required that all donors are vaccinated, however. But our Red Cross volunteers and our Red Cross staff are all vaccinated. And we do have Red Cross masks. These are actually very nice cloth. These are very nice masks. They're actually a little warm, quite honestly. But we do have Red Cross masks for everybody at our blood drives. And in all, all operations and all personnel and all buildings at this time are required to be masked and vaccinated at all times. It's a great do, question. Do so Safety is important. Are, Go ahead. are the donors required to wear masks? They are. They are required okay. to mask by the facility's requirements as well as our own. Ted, may I add something that I, Please. Ned, I'm sorry, uh, that may uh, put your mind at ease as well. Yes, everyone has to wear a mask the whole time you're in there, every donor, every uh, everyone else. But we also, um, we have sanitation, uh, we have hand sanitizers on the desk, we have alcohol wipes. The donor doesn't touch any of the equipment, only the volunteer does, so you can wipe it down. But you, the, you're never touching anything they touch, even when you scan their uh, ID or their license. I have them lay it on the, on the table and I scan it with the scanner from overhead, and then I tell them they can put it, now put it away. It's really real, and you're only with each donor as you're checking them in. Oh, it could be a matter of a minute or two. It's not, and you're not really that close to them. So it's really, I, I have never had one concern about it not being safe throughout the virus. It's a great, great okay. question. And again, safety is important for our staff, for our volunteers, and for our donors. I mean, okay. Just, just to add. I have one other question. Please. What about bad weather? Like you sign up for a blood drive a month ahead of time, you get up that morning and it's bad weather. Of course, so you will have a volunteer manager as well as other volunteer engagement teammates. So on the day of the, if the day of the event happens, oh my God, there's a snowstorm, those conditions would have to be addressed. The blood drive itself may be canceled, in which case we'll be in touch with you or you can be in touch with us. Marianne, I mean, you may, you may have some examples of weather impacted events. So first of all, I always tell the people I train, check the volunteer connection before you leave for the drive, because I'm told that's the first place it will show up. We are supposed to be notified though. And there is a snow hotline, which we should make available. Well, not now, but if you become a volunteer, there is an 800 number, which I think it's an 800 number, uh, which is a snow hotline. You can just call it and know immediately if that blood drive was canceled. 
Thank you. It's sort of like uh, back in the day when we remember when schools were closed because of our you know, snow, we all had to listen to the radio and listen for our school closing numbers. Now we go online and you'll find out if that event has been canceled for any reason. And again, we'll be flexible. If something happens in your life that makes you can't get to that blood drive, all we ask is that you communicate. We're in the business of things happening unexpectedly. So we know when things do occur that you kind of, you know, pop up at the last minute. So all we ask is some communication and nobody's going to give it the merits or anything of that nature. It's all about being open and honest with each other. So thank you for that. And again, if the weather happens, weather happens. We go on. So Kelly has a question in the chat and I think I'll Please. try and answer it. So it's will the vaccination requirements change? Will there ever be an exception with the religious exemption? And so right now I would just like to share that we follow all the CDC guidelines. And so whatever the CDC says is what the Red Cross follows. Also, we have um, if the, the only exemption we have right now is for people to work as a virtual volunteer. So if that's something you're interested in, we can help find a virtual opportunity for you. But if those exemptions or if if the requirements change, we will update you. Our, our president and CEO is Gail McGovern, and she is amazing. And anytime these updates happen with the team and with um, the the input of you know the CDC guidance, we will update the volunteers if any of these um, items change. So that's one of the great things about the Red Cross. Um, so if anyone wants to add to that, feel free. But that was I, a great I, question. I concur. I concur. Gail Gail's been a phenomenal leader. At these last eighteen plus months have been difficult on all of us. But the thing that I've been most proud of is the Red Cross mission has gone on. Our volunteers continue. We've learned to adapt. We've learned to work with the system. You know, as my Gumby on my desk reminds me every day that we do have to be flexible and be able to adjust accordingly. And we're learning as well as along the process, guys. So um, our volunteers don't let something, you know, like they, don't, they don't let anything get in the way of the mission. And that has just been astounding cooperation and commitment. So. Um, we hope you enjoy it. So um, any more questions? This has been awesome. This has been fantastic. Uh, does anybody else have any guests or questions, sir? Good morning, everybody, and thanks a lot for the information, and, and uh, I'm excited to be a volunteer. I have my phone interview tonight. I think I have all my paperwork done, uh, and I'm excited to drive. Um, I live in Jersey, just across the bridge. Um, and I do consider Philly my city as well as Camden. Um, uh, and I'm wondering, I guess Deidre might be able to address, uh, will I be able to kind of morph into helping here in New Jersey as well? I noticed that there wasn't a need for uh, drivers here and I really want to drive because um, I want to learn the area a little better. Um, I'm a recent military retiree um, and I'm not from here. Uh, my wife is, so I want to learn the area by driving and I figured this was a good way to do it. So um, will I be able to kind of morph into helping on this side of the river as well as uh, in Philadelphia? I'll take that one. Um, as far as driving, I have, like I said, when I had vision problems, I said I want to drive here. After that, I said I don't want to go there. Uh, you can drive pretty much what you want to do is contact. It's called distribution. And before your shift, you want to tell distribution, whatever. I won't go to New York City. I absolutely want to do Southeast Jersey or whatever. And it can vary by shift. But if you tell them a couple hours ahead of time, distribution, I used to I used to be a Navy pilot. And when you're in operations and things are changing by the minute and you don't know what's happening, that is absolutely what is happening in distribution. There were gunshots here. They need blood. There was an accident there. They need blood. Uh, people are backed up from two days ago and they haven't got their normal. So if you tell them what you want to do, it's the needs of the Red Cross. You know, they have to have blood going somewhere. But if you tell them you want to do something, I'd say in the high 90 percent of the time that I've said I want X, I get X. But you just need to tell them ahead of time. And and uh, we have basically our region for driving is this whole chunk of Pennsylvania. I've gone as far as Danville. Uh, 
all of uh, most of Delaware and all of Jersey and a dab of New York and a dab of Maryland. So you can pick anywhere in that region you like, just tell them ahead of time. Right on. Thanks. I'm retired Chief Petty Officer. Okay. <laughs> well, Mike, <laughs> Go Mike, well, welcome to Philadelphia. Make Thanks. sure you're make sure you're an Eagles fan wherever you do. And Derek, right I don't on. know if you, can add, if you can add anything about him, opportunity to also drive in South Jersey. Right on. Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. Guys, do we have any more questions? This has been awesome. Guys, we are so looking for there was a question in the chat box I do want to address. If you were a volunteer prior and you became inactive over the time, do not restart an application. We can actually reactivate your existing record. So there's no reason for you to do a whole new application. It actually clogs up the system. So actually email myself or Lynn and we can reactivate your existing profile and address any intake steps then. Again, we'll work with you and you'll, you'll uh, we'll make it as easy as possible for you to get back on board. It's amazing how many volunteers come back. So um, I just want to close by again saying that this is why we do it, guys. We do it because, you know, we save lives. And this is a gentleman who actually his child received some blood donations. And these blood donations are in part because blood their ambassador was there and because a blood transport volunteer did his or her role as well. So I think you recognize this is why we do it. It's not for the numbers. It's not for the quantity. It's not for the, you know, the, the, the kudo. You know, it's not for the, you know, pat the backs. It's because we know at the end of the day, blood, which does not have a very long shelf life, which is why we're always collecting it, is saving lives and we can't do it without volunteers so uh, i'd like to leave you with that message and we kind of remind everybody why we do this um so with that uh i want to say thank you uh especially thank you to dave and marianne for joining us today you guys are awesome for all of our new volunteers if you have any questions we can't wait to hear from you can't wait to have you on the team and uh please be in touch on behalf of Gumby and I. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Great day. Have a good day, everybody. Be Thank well, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.